Remember yesterday in town, um, we ran into a girl called... Who? Michelle? Michelle. Oh, Michelle. Yeah. Um, remember the conversation we had? Yeah. Okay. That was pretty, pretty interesting. That was really interesting. I think people can learn a lot from her. <laughs> Cute, Cute video. video. Hi, I'm Michelle, and I would just like to know what the Namibian people know what the hemophilia disease is, because I have a brother that suffers from it, and I am a carrier. So we just like to know if people know what it is and yeah. There are three key things in Michelle's question that I think are quite important to note down. One, she wants to know if you guys understand what hemophilia disease is. Two, her brother has it. And three, she's a carrier. So why is this important though? Well, I think before we get to that, it's important that we define what hemophilia is. So hemophilia, what is hemophilia? Hemophilia is a disorder of the blood in which blood fails to clot normally. Right, so the person who has hemophilia lacks these key proteins we call clotting factors and they help your blood to clot. So, clotting. What is clotting, Alex? Well, think of a clot as an aggregation of proteins. They help form this mesh network that sort of binds against your blood vessels and prevents you from bleeding. So a clot helps you not to bleed. Therefore, people with hemophilia tend to bleed for longer periods of time pertaining to minor injuries. An easy way to remember this is actually in the name itself, because hemo means blood in Latin, while philia means love. Therefore, people with hemophilia love, love to, to bleed. bleed. So, this begs the question, Alex. What exactly causes it? Well, two-thirds of hemophilia is actually genetically inherited. Whereas the other third is sporadic. Or spontaneous. Or by chance. Now, you'd be interested to know that there's three types of hemophilia. Type A, called the classic type. Type B, known as Christmas disease. And type C, which we refer to as Rosenthal's disease. However, we'll not be getting into the specifics of each and every disease today. Just to avoid getting too technical. Now here's a fun fact. Hemophilia only affects boys. So understanding all this, why is it exactly that hemophilia only affects boys, Phil? Well, the answer to that is actually quite interesting, Alex. You see, the human genome is made up of 23 sets of chromosomes. Right. Now, the 23rd set codes for sex, which is XX for women and XY for men. The mutation for hemophilia is on the X chromosome. That's correct. This is why girls are carriers, because they've got two X chromosomes and one kind of picks up the slack for the other. Think of it as though it's a spare tire. Boys only have one X chromosome, therefore they manifest the disease. So this is why Michelle's a carrier. And her brother has the disease. And it did. So when should hemophilia be suspected? Well, it usually presents at a very young age, an average of about two years old. You might notice that your son or little brother develops this swollen bruised knee just after playing or even just after they start crawling. And this is because they are bleeding into their knee joints, a condition called hemorrhosis, which is highly suggestive of a bleeding disorder of which hemophilia is the most common one. True. You may also suspect hemophilia if bleeding occurs non-stop, directly after vigorously brushing your teeth or after minor procedures. This can be going to your dentist for a simple tooth extraction, after an injection, or even after a circumcision. Depending on how severe the disease is. Fact. So here's the thing. If you suspect hemophilia or any other bleeding disorder, you might want to go to your local doctor and have a few tests done. Once a diagnosis of hemophilia is confirmed, treatment simply entails replacing the clotting factor that is missing. Now it is important to note that treatment for hemophilia is lifelong, therefore certain lifestyle modifications may need to be employed. That's actually quite correct. These include avoiding things such as contact sports or roughhousing. And if being active is your thing, you might want to try swimming or running, as these are good alternatives to build strength. You may also want to avoid certain drugs such as aspirin, warfarin and other blood thinners as these increase your bleeding time and therefore make you bleed for a longer period of time pertaining to a minor injury. Certain precautionary measures may also need to be undertaken before going through the surgical procedure. This is why it's important to tell your doctor when you have something like hemophilia or you can wear a bracelet in times of an emergency where there's no one to give a medical history. Although there's various other types of bleeding disorders out there, we thought it was very necessary we made this video on hemophilia. It is very, very common in our setting. That's right. Have your doctor tell you about other bleeding disorders like von Willebrand's disease or the various steps of thrombocytopenia. It is important to note, hemophilia is not curable, but people on treatment lead very normal lives. So now you know about hemophilia. What it is, who it affects, and everything else in between. I hope you learned something new today. My name is Philemon. I'm Alex. And, and this, this is The Third Space. Third Space.